The beautiful streets and squares of Edinburgh were once home to two of the most gruesome killers of the 19th century, Burke and Hare. The story of Burke and Hare all starts with medical science. This is the Edinburgh University Medical School. Behind me is a group of medical students taking part in one of their daily lectures. To learn more about how the human body works, part of their training is, and has been for centuries, to dissect the human body. Nowadays, people agree to donate their bodies to medical science when they die. But back at the beginning of the 19th century, medical students eager to learn more about the human form were only allowed to operate on the corpses of executed criminals. Because there weren't enough of these to supply the number of keen medical students, a new trade started up in Edinburgh known as body snatching. Under the cover of darkness, body snatchers would break into Edinburgh's graveyards and dig up corpses before selling them to medical schools in the city. With such a high demand for dead bodies, the trade flourished. As body snatching became widespread, families of the dead became more concerned and patrols were set up to guard cemeteries. Some, like this one, even had watchtowers built. So body snatching became more difficult and fewer people attempted it. A good thing, you might think, but this pushed up the prices people could charge for the dead bodies, making the trade even more profitable. Like many other people at the time, Burke and Hare realised there was good money to be made from the sale of bodies. Their plan came along almost by chance. Hare owned a lodging house from which he received regular rent from his tenants. One day he found one of them dead with outstanding rent to pay. In need of the cash, Hare had an idea. Burke and Hare put a heavy weight in a coffin so that people believed that Donald had been given a proper burial. It was a nerve-wracking business, but they got away with it. Then they sold the body to a top medical lecturer, Dr Knox, who paid them £10. They'd found a willing buyer, so they decided to go into the trade of supplying bodies full time. But instead of snatching dead bodies, they decided it would be easier and more profitable to kill. The pair selected their victims from the poorest people in Edinburgh often homeless and with no one to care if they disappeared. They would befriend them, get them drunk, and then murder them in the dead of night. Birkenhair continued to provide Dr Knox with a steady supply of bodies, which made his medical school extremely popular among eager students. However, problems arose when Dr Knox's pupils started to recognise the bodies they were being asked to dissect. Birkenhair's reign of terror only ended when one of Hare's tenants noticed him acting suspiciously. Soon after the mysterious disappearance of Mary Doherty, an Irish beggar, he saw the gruesome pair leaving the guest house with a heavy tea chest. He immediately alerted the police. The police had been suspicious of Dr Knox's medical practices for some time. Their first inquiry took them to his medical school. It was there they found the body of Mary Doherty. It wasn't long before their investigations led them straight to Burke and Hare. There was a massive outcry, with the public calling for Burke and Hare to be hanged along with Dr Knox. However, forensic testing was relatively new at the time, and as Mary Doherty had been strangled, it was difficult for police to prove she had been murdered. Hare made a deal to give evidence against Burke in return for his freedom. Then he fled the city. No one is certain what became of him. Hare's confession condemned Burke, and he was hanged in public in front of thousands of people. 
His body ended up in the same place as his victims, in a medical school where it was dissected. After this, his skeleton was put on display here at Edinburgh University Medical School, where it remains to this day. So that took care of the bones. As for the flesh, here in the nearby Royal College of Surgeons, you can find this leather notebook made from Burke's skin. The Burke and Hare case shocked society of the day so much that in 1832, Parliament brought out the Anatomy Act. This legalised the use of dead bodies where corpses were left unclaimed by family members, at last bringing an end to the grisly business in body snatching. But the evil deeds of Burke and Hare still haunt the dark streets of Edinburgh. Ooh, a gruesome tale, especially just before you're about to tuck into something to eat. And talking of something to eat, here's a tasty little few questions for you. What food is the UK's most popular dish? Has over 10,000 restaurants serving it and over 2.5 million customers eating it every week? Well, if you haven't got the answer, it's the curry. And this here is Manju Mali, one of the...